or a gun squad. So today we are met Blue Jaws. Bilum, Conky, Tire Leaf, or Pemi. This has a lot of names. I miss some of them, but I grew up knowing this as Dukunu. The exact ingredients that make this varies a lot depending on which region you're from, but I'm going to show you the one I grew up with. Alright, let's get cooking. So the first thing I usually get done is the coconut milk. You can always use canned coconut milk but that has inferior flavor compared to a decent dry coconut that you process yourself. But if you are in a pinch using canned coconut milk or coconut cream will cut your prep time by probably half and you would still end up with a very tasty dukunu. This I'm going to remove from the shell and a spoon makes this safer and easier. Dukuno has many variations depending on which country or region you are from. I'm just going to chop up this coconut so my blender has an easier time. Using a juice I would probably have worked out a lot better for this because I would have a little bit of concentrated milk. Just going to give this a quick wash to remove any trash. I don't need a lot of water, just enough so my blender doesn't die. Next I'm going to strain this. Usually some grated coconut is added to the dukuna butter. So I'm just going to add two big tablespoons of the pulp into the milk I'm straining. So it will be in the dukuna when I add the coconut milk. I'll just use my hands here to get out all of that milk. Yeah, super rich coconut milk. There are a wide variety of dukuno even in Jamaica. It usually calls for one or two starchy vegetables with flour and cornmeal. Today I'm using green banana. This is my favorite dukuno. I really love the taste and texture and the color is nice. I don't need much for this recipe because I'm only making a small batch. Five or six fingers should be good. You could oil your hands when peeling green bananas so they don't get stained but I like peeling banana in water. It helps a bit with the stain. It also stops them from oxidizing and turning dark but for this recipe, this is actually something I want. Get rid of those skins and water. I'm going to grater this with a box grater using the smallest holes. Trying to be really careful so I don't slice my fingers. Sweet potato is a very popular starchy vegetable that's used with the green banana but I don't have any. What I do have though is a piece of yam that I want to use up so I'm going to use that instead. Just give that a quick peel and wash and I'm going to grate this the same way as a green banana. Slimy. The green banana is really getting darker and that's actually what I want because that is going to give it the deep dark color that's characteristic of dukunu made with green banana. box grater really do mean. I tried and fail. If you don't care as much about color as me or more about your fingers, just blend everything with coconut milk. Prepping would take way less time. 
All right, let's get everything together. I'm adding two tablespoons of vanilla, a tablespoon and a half of cinnamon, a little over two thirds cup sugar, a teaspoon of grated ginger, half teaspoon almond extract, two half teaspoons of rose water, half a tablespoon molasses, half cup flour and salt to taste. Also going to grate in about a teaspoon of nutmeg. Mix all that together. This is going to be too soft because I haven't added the coconut milk as yet. So I'm adding one cup flour for a total of one and a half cup flour. This is roughly half cup coconut milk. Just mix that in properly. Cornmeal is another popular ingredient, but it makes the corner really hard, so I'm just going to skip it. All right, let's talk about leaves. This is banana leaf, but plant leaf is also okay. This is used to wrap the dokuno. The younger ones are less brittle and easier to handle, but regardless of which ones we use, we still have to wilt them. Jamaicans just call it quail. Before that, I'm going to slice these up into manageable sizes. Keep a small piece of that center stem so they don't break too much. The leaves are usually wilted or quailed over open flames. The slight char on the banana leaves add a ton of unique flavor, especially over wood fire, but steaming with boiling water works too. If you use a big enough container, you can process everything in one go like I'm doing here. The heat quickly wilts them, making them less brittle and way more flexible. I'm just going to move them around a bit and press them down. I'll set that aside till I'm ready for it. Now for the Thai pot. Traditionally, the dried banana bark is used and I got some here. We usually tear strips to make strings. Or cut them. Yeah, these won't do. Too old and too dry. Good thing I planned for this. So, last night I cut a couple strips from the midrib of the banana leaf and steamed them. They are just as durable as good strings from the banana bark. They get dry really quick after you steam them. This was just overnight. You could always use some food safe twine or strings like baker's twine instead. This is just to keep things authentic. Everything is assembled, so let's make some dokuno. Growing up, this was my favorite part. I always used to help mommy with this, but I'm kind of rusty now because I haven't done this for so long. I'm just going to cut these leaves to an appropriate size. I want smaller dokuno, so around 4 by 7 inches should be okay. Ouch. Have to go sand that down. Alright, grab one of the banana strings and lay it down. See how flexible that is now? Place that over the string. Just line that up. Two tablespoons should work for this. Don't overfill it. Fold this by overlapping the long sides. Then fold over the bottom. Fold over the top. Thread the strings over and under to keep this together like the first step when you're tying your shoes. Twist 45 degrees, then flip it over. Then finally tie off that with a knot, nice and neat. Perfect. I'll show you one more. This is one of the most enjoyable part of making dokuno. You feel so skilled making this, but it's not that hard. After the first two or three, it becomes intuitive. This filling is perfect. You want it viscous enough so you can make them easily but not too thick where the finished product ends up tough and doughy. Too much flour or cornmeal will always make this stuff up. So that's why I always skip cornmeal. Usually dukuno are probably two or three times the size but these are really nice single servings.
If you don't have banana leaf, you can use aluminum foil. It's the same procedure, only easier. You can also use some parchment paper or even ziplock or plastic bags that are heat safe and food safe. I remember having cornmeal dukuno made in poly bags when we used hot coconut milk to mix the cornmeal butter. So they were a bit softer when they were done but still was my favorite. That's a typical size. Perfect. That's a nice haul. I feel proud because I haven't done this in so long. But these look decent. I maybe messed up one, but that's about it. Alright, time to cook these. I had extra coconut milk, so I'm going to use that to boil the dukuno. Usually it's just water and salt. Want some dried cinnamon leaves. Just going to add everything. A nice sprinkle of salt. This needs a bit more water and I'll cover that up and let it come to a simmer. As soon as this is bubbling, go ahead and place in the dokono. Boiling this in coconut milk will only add a little bit of flavor. I had it there so I used it but feel free to just use a bit of seasoned and spiced water. These are really small so half an hour of the marin should cook them completely. Just checking halfway through to make sure everything is good. This is just about done but I'm going to test one real quick. I really love hot dokono fresh out of the pot. This for me is the best way to have it. Ah, that color and texture is very nice. Man, that's delicious. The texture is nice and gooey from all the starch from the yam and banana. Literally mouth-watering. The spices are mellow and the sweetness level is just perfect. Alright, I'm going to remove the rest of these from the pot. This smells really good. I will let these cool and put them in the fridge. At this point in filming, it's pretty late so I had to pick it up the next day. These are nice and chilled. Cold dokono are way more flavorful than when they are hot. The flavors pop more and it's a bit sweeter. These are a lot firmer now. I'm just going to open up one to show you the difference. I could reheat this but nothing beats dokono fresh out of the pot and piping hot. It's not as flavorful but it makes up for it by having a really nice texture. And of course it's hot. Oh that's nice. Very delicious. One of my all-time favorite snacks. These thin bits are also really good. This was great. Making this one was a lot of fun. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. Link is in the description if you want some exclusive content. Thanks God for watching and I will see you in the next one.